What is up? I'm Moana Turtle and today we're going to be talking about the Sword and Shield pre-release events that will be going on not this weekend but the weekend after. So that's January 25th and 26th. Uh, this event is going to be super awesome. I'm trying to hype it up for everyone. I, I think everyone should attend even if you've never attended an event before. In my opinion there is something for everyone. If you're into the competitive side the promos are so good. If you're a, a collector I think this is also a great opportunity because these promos are so good that I think they'll hold value really well and probably most important of all this is the new gen. This is the new era. We're finally in the sword and shield era saying goodbye to sun and moon so something for everyone and if you are always been on the fence but you never attend a live event you know okay so you know this is also for you cosmic eclipse was actually the first pre-release event i've ever been to and i was super happy i went to it and i think that you know if you're uh you know not sure how to go about finding where to go we'll kind of walk through those steps so this is specifically catered to also towards you know people that uh, are not really familiar with how these events go so we'll get into all that let's start with the announcement of the promos all right to start with the news that was announced yesterday or day after depending when this drops uh, so we're gonna go through the promos that they're going to be featured in the build -a box shout out to get wreck and Omega Richard uh, who attended our live stream and they kind of like let me know like hey did you see this and I didn't and uh, so shout outs to you guys for bringing this to my attention all right we're gonna start with what the promos are gonna be the first one this is I can't believe it. in my opinion this it would be my vote for the strongest card in this set Rillaboom first off it's a starter which is awesome and Rillaboom is a stage 2 so that's probably its main weakness but I think it has one of the most ridiculous effects uh, in Voltage Beat so once during your turn you may search your deck for up to 2 grass energy and attach it to one of your Pokemon uh, so it's a kind of like you can just have this on your bench uh, doesn't say that you can't do this more than once if you have multiple Rillabooms and it's a free ramp up too but kind of like the most important thing it comes straight from your deck so there's no prerequisites where I have to get these energy in the discard pile like Malamar that it has to be in my hand for a bunch of other stuff so this thing is just straight ramp from the deck um, I, I'm not aware of a card maybe there is a card that uh, was in existence prior to me getting back into the meta uh, but I think this effect is amazing all right, moving on to the next one, Frost Moth. I know this was one that uh, Correct is super exciting about. This one also has an amazing ramp up ability in Ice Dance. This one is only stage one, so it's a little bit more accessible than Rillaboom and its ability. So none of these, like the attack is at all relevant for these Pokemon in my opinion. Uh, so Ice Dance, as often as you like during your turn, you may attach a water energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. So this is unlimited ramp, but it is limited to what you have in your hand. Uh, so it's kind of like, I kind of like the Rillaboom a little bit better just because there's no, you know, there'll always, the chance of energy being in your deck is always going to be, it's probably super reliable. Getting these in your hand, you'll probably want to somehow manipulate it. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head what the best way to do that is, but there's probably some supporters that can help you or trainers to basically kind of like energy retrieve them back. Maybe that can help create some kind of engine. So Frostmoth, again, these are really good. I think those are the two uh, best accelerators that I saw in the Sh Sword and Shield uh, sets. And like all these cards, so they were in our series where I was going through the Sword and Shield cards and like, all right, these ones sound amazing. And all of the pre-release promos were mentioned in those videos. I feel like previous pre-releases, it's like, oh, like uh, Cosmic Clips, this Entei thing. I couldn't even tell you what it does it was so unmemorable uh, the last time you know promos felt this good was probably like team up which I didn't attend but this is just like after the fact and like those you know the Jirachi still is super valuable they had a Charizard so obviously that one is super sought after too with that amazing art all right going on to number three this one's probably the least um, the probably the the least Overwhelming, <laughs> I guess, but it is still pretty cool, and I hope this card is uh, ends up managing to kind of like have some impact on the meta. I do like it when decks kind of like themes, kind of like the Evolutions deck in Cosmic Clips, where they had all those cards that can buff other Evolution GXs. All right, so this one has Steely Spirits, uh, so Galarian Preserver. So it is a stage one. Your Metal Pokemon attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So this is just a straight buff. Um, and I think there's a different card that allows you to tutor up more of these guys so 
you know, maybe there is something cool they can make it. I, again, I feel like this is probably the worst of the four. But then moving on to number four, we have Chinchino. I know Kevrax super excited about this one too. Has the trade ability from Zorark GX. And make do. You may discard a card from your hand to use this ability. Once in your turn, you may draw two cards. So this thing, you know, Zorark, actually we are talking about it in the stream, like, oh, what is the most impactful GX? And one of the top answers was Zorark GX because of that ability. And this one's not even a V. So this one only does take one prize card. Yes, its ability to fight is probably less significant than Zorark's, but I think that's fine. Chinchina's probably gonna be very strong in the upcoming meta and i think because of that like these promos will be very sought after so i think it's a home run on three of the four and then the, the fourth one is just like it's still solid and i still think it has some chances to uh having a very significant impact to the meta so to sum up all this hype before we get into how to figure out where you can attend a pre-release again you know new era new set new gen new pokemon uh very strong promos and it is just so much fun again i this last release was the first pre-release i ever went to and i'm so glad i went there uh, i usually don't like to go someplace by myself i'd rather go with someone uh but everyone was so friendly and um yeah it was just a great time so i definitely recommend you do attend one sorry so now we'll get into all right well you know i've always been thinking about attending but i never pulled the trigger how do i go about doing so all right we're gonna walk through the steps that i basically took to figure out where i should attend pre-release uh, i just googled pokemon event locator and you can just go to the pokemon website and then we'll just fill in this uh, country and then your postal code. So I'll just punch in the postal code of the PO box address and we'll just say like 24 miles and we'll limit it to premier events just to kind of filter through the results. All right, so premier events will basically show you the, um, sometimes they have other ones. I'm not sure why some of these challenges are here. Let me zoom in a little bit, but then we're looking for these sword and shield pre-release events. Uh, I'll say, it'll say some kind of pre-release and depending where you are, maybe there's a lot of options. Maybe there's only a few, uh, where I am outside of Boston. Yes, there is quite a few options and, um, my recommendation would be if you kind of click into these, a lot of times they'll have, uh, like a you know website or something to their uh to like the store or like a facebook page or something like that my recommendation would be you know just do some research see if okay the thing i would kind of focus on is how big are these events and uh kind of like the age ranges of the people that attend i went as so far as to call and actually stop by one of the stores and just ask them like hey can you just tell me about the events or whether it was about league or um pre-release and basically i was kind of looking at the, like the age range and i wasn't interested in going to an event where it was just like younger kids who don't really know the game but they're just there to for pokemon not that there's anything wrong with that and if that's the audience that you're looking for um again i would just go and ask and you know one of the stores said you know we, yeah we probably get mainly kids and then some of the other stores said yeah it's kind of like almost honestly it's like half and half where half our kids uh, that aren't really that familiar with the game and half our adults that are there just to see the new cards and yeah they actually know what's going on and they can actually um you know build a somewhat viable deck in the build a box um the things that they give you so that would be my recommendation uh some of them you can contact the organizer but to be honest i'd rather I just kind of went about like calling them or messaging on Facebook if they had a Facebook page. And um, yeah, and then kind of like once you get there, it's kind of, probably get your their, their hooks into you. Then you'll be attending their weekly leagues and stuff like that. And it's just so much fun. Uh, I highly, highly recommend if you've always been on the fence, but just never made the dive into attending a live event. This is the perfect time to start. Last thing I want to highlight is just to actually proves through the details sometimes there is some stuff that you should be aware of my thought is that this pre-release probably is going to be very um you know well attended and sometimes they do kind of limit it so uh the one that we're looking at here actually says you know registration is first come first serve and they will take the first 20 attendees and a lot of times you can kind of like pre-order online which sounds kind of like oh that doesn't sound necessary but you know, it wouldn't shock me if, uh, you know, they actually did run out of slots. And that would be kind of disappointing if you went there and you're really excited and ultimately like, oh, well, we're kind of full. I'm sorry. Um, I imagine a lot of them will try to run repeat events. Like the previous I went to, I actually attended two of them on the same day. Just basically after it's like, hey, we're going to do it again. 
Uh, so that's something to be aware of and think of consider pre-ordering your tickets. Um, maybe it's necessary, maybe not. And then the other thing to just in case you're not familiar with the kind of like how the format works, a lot of times people are there kind of just for the packs, but they do kind of hold like mini kind of like tournament event kind of thing. So what happens is everyone gets, maybe you, you've probably seen these products in like GameStop and stuff like that, it's called like build, uh, build and battle kits. What's inside is basically four booster packs of the given set and a evolution set, which is basically a small core of a deck. Uh, so it's, it's like 23 cards and it'll come with, uh, you know, basically a couple evolutionary lines and a handful of trainers and supporters. And then basically the ven the venue will provide you with the energies you need to build a 40 card deck. Um, and, you know, the idea is you have that kind of like that core, that 23 cards, and that will have, they'll have a couple of like calls, including the promo. And so maybe most likely you'll try to build a deck around that. Um, and then you also have your four booster packs, which you can, which you open and you can try to mix in some of those cards. More often than not, like you kind of just take your, you know, you take your core and you try to slot in whatever cards you can. And then you just have fun. You know, it's a, obviously it's not a very serious tournament. Uh, sometimes they do have prizes. I think the one I went to is like, you know, basically you get a pack at the end of it, but it's just a lot of fun. You know, I did a lot of trading and stuff like that. And everyone was like so friendly. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend you guys definitely attend a pre-release, especially if you've never been to one and you've always been on the fence. So hopefully this was helpful to one, if you're aware of all this, and maybe this, uh, you know, all right, now I'm definitely going to seal the deal. If you weren't aware of the information now, like this, maybe that convinced you, or again, if you've never been one, hopefully this kind of pushes you over the edge and gets you into the LGS. And that, probably that's probably the last thing, hey, support your LGS. So uh, that's gonna be it for me today. As always, guys, let me know what your thoughts are in a comment down below and um yeah if i swayed change your mind or anything let me know <laughs> that's my goal here but on that guys that's gonna be it for today i'm wanda turtle and i'll catch you guys next time